Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. First, I just gotta give a shout out to my sweet husband. Thank you, David, so much for this Prince sweatshirt. Uh, David was flying through Minneapolis and in the Minneapolis airport, there is a Prince store and uh, he picked this up for me and I love it. So anyway, thanks, David. Um, so this week's topic is peace peace and it's one of these topics that you know i searched in our archive of vlogs and i cannot believe that i've never shot a vlog on the topic of do what gives you peace and it's been up for me lately and i'll explain why but it this topic first uh came to mind when i read someone's post in the bright line eating community this is the facebook group that has all of our current active members in Brightline Eating. It's just a very lovely, sweet group. And someone posted in there recently, um, I just want my peace back. And what she said was that she first did Brightline Eating and did it solidly and just followed the plan and got this tremendous peace, just this freedom. I mean, how do we define peace in the sense that we're talking about? We're, we're talking about, um, the absence of obsession with food. We're talking about uh, a stillness of mind and a spaciousness and freedom from food chatter and from thoughts of, should I, shouldn't I? Will I, won't I? Uh, ooh, that looks good, but I, I'm not gonna have it. I can't have it, ba, 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 ba freedom from that, just mental peace, right? I mean, think of any addiction that you don't have, right? Maybe you don't have gambling addiction. Maybe you don't have pornography addiction. Maybe you don't have heroin addiction, right? You likely currently have utter peace from thoughts around that substance or that process, that behavior, that addiction. You're not thinking about um, the casino that you're not going to go to this weekend. You're not thinking about the friends that you're not going to call up to, you know, set up a, a blackjack or poker weekend. You're not thinking about um, the internet access and whether, it, you know, you're going to call them to remove the barriers that you'd put up so that you couldn't access the pornography. You're not thinking about the store that's right around the corner that has the nudie magazines that you're not going to go buy. You're not thinking about, you get it, right? It's like you have peace around all the cues and accoutrements of all the addictions that you don't have. And when it comes to food, having peace around what you've eaten or not eaten, whether you're on your plan or off your plan, whether you're gonna have that thing or not, is such a gift. So I was thinking about peace, and uh, twice in the last two or three weeks, I lost my peace, and it made me value it so much more. So the first time wasn't around food per se, it was around caffeine more. Uh, I gave up caffeine a little while ago. Historically speaking, in my 19 and a half years of uh, not eating sugar and flour and blah, 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 I am not always off caffeine, but often I am. But what I found a while back when I gave up caffeine was I got pretty hooked on decaf. Decaf coffee, black decaffeinated coffee, which is ridiculous to get addicted to that. I know there is a tiny bit of caffeine in black decaffeinated coffee. And I had recently sworn off it. So I was not having any decaf. And I had a friend who also has a slightly addictive relationship with decaf and she also went off it. And so we were off it together, but I found that I was having some cravings around it. Then the cravings went away. And then a month passed, another month passed. And then I got the idea in my head, <laughs> beware the idea in the head. I got the idea that a cup of decaf here and there is really a nice thing. And I would try to go back to the decaf, but allow myself just one cup a day. So vaguely sensing I wasn't being any too smart. Uh, that's a line straight out of the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous for those who get the reference. That's what the guy's thinking when he um, decides to have some whiskey, but 
on a full stomach and only if he pours it in milk. <laughs> he pours a shot of his whiskey in milk. He vaguely senses he's not being any too smart. Anyway, I vaguely sensed I wasn't being any too smart, but I started the one cup of decaf a day experiment. And for a time, it seemed to go well in the sense that I was having just one cup of decaf a day. But what happened was it disrupted my peace because suddenly I found myself thinking early in the day, do I want my cup of decaf now or should I save it for later? What's my day like later? When might I most want it? And then later in the day, I found myself thinking, can I have my cup of decaf now? Oh shoot, I've already had it. And, and on it went, right? And so not ridiculously obsessively, but here and there throughout the day, my mind would think about my cup of decaf. Now, I did a couple of times have a cup of decaf that absolutely hit the spot and it, it, oh, it delivered on the promise and I was just sitting there basking in it thinking, oh, this tastes so good and this is so lovely and I'm so glad I'm allowing myself this one cup of decaf every day. But a lot of the rest of the time, I was annoyed by the thought of it when, you know, there's nothing wrong with that thought per se. I just prefer my peace. I don't really want to be thinking about my cup of decaf. Um, even four or five times a day, that thought is unnecessary. And I value my peace so much. This is the point. I value my peace so much that I concluded after about four or five days that the experiment wasn't working. So on the fifth day, I'd had my cup of decaf early in the morning. And then later in the day, there was a stretch of time where I really wanted a cup of decaf. I was out and about and Starbucks has a decaf grande Americano that has more caffeine in it than it really should being decaf. It really has too much caffeine in it. I'm sure I can feel it in my body. Uh, and I wanted that supercharged cup of decaf at Starbucks. And what I decided was I've already concluded that this experiment isn't working, so I'll make it official by having a second cup, breaking my commitment to myself, thereby forcing myself to abandon the one cup of decaf experiment. And I liked this idea so much, I went and I had that second cup of decaf, concluded this experiment has not worked, and then a voice came in and said, well, you don't have to give it up right this second. You can now have as much decaf as you want for a time. And then when it all explodes in your face, give up decaf completely again. And then I thought, I am not going to do that. I am not going to do that. So I made a phone call to a commitment buddy. I said, I am, I am swearing off the decaf and I made it official. And then I made it official by making a stick contract, something I haven't talked about in the vlog for quite a long time. A stick contract is a, stick is an app. It's spelled S-T-I-C-K-K, -K, just a double K there at the end. And it's a behavioral contracting process where you can actually put up stakes. I put up $50 pledged to an anti-charity, which means a political, political movement that I would never, ever, ever contribute to or want to. $50 goes to them if in the next year I have a cup of decaf um, or regular caffeine. So I've got a year of uh, peace carved out mentally. The thoughts about decaf have pretty much gone away and I have peace again. So that was the first experiment that that little roller coaster happened uh, a little bit ago. And then the other thing that happened is I found myself having some food thoughts that really were quite strong. I went further down the path with sugar and flour, like literally thinking about my binge food of choice and mentally imagining making that food. I was just sitting somewhere listening to a talk and my mind started to wander. And before I knew it, I was thinking about it in just too much detail. I did jack myself up and uh, started to like force myself to remember that is poison to me. That is not just yummy food, that is poison to me. And I imagined it mixed with Drano and making me ill. And, uh, but the food thoughts kind of came home to roost and were there for the weekend. And my kids eat all sorts of foods that I don't eat and normally it doesn't bother me at all. But this weekend it was really climbing in my head and disturbing my peace. I was really thinking that their food looked really good. And what I noticed was, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that I don't live with this obsession all the time. 
I used to. I used to. All the time. And now that I'm free from it, that peace is so precious. So I'm thinking about what that person said, which was, I just want my peace back. And having lost my peace twice recently, I have to say I so appreciate and value the days upon days that I spend free from f thoughts about food, what I'm going to eat or not eat, and oh, just having peace around it matters so much to me. So I'm struck by a couple of pieces of advice that we give in the Bright Line Eating program that relate to peace. The first is whenever people ask about borderline foods, I'm talking about, for example, Ezekiel bread that's technically not made with any flour. That's a classic example. Or things like kombucha or, uh, I don't know, fill in the blank. Anyway, these borderline foods. What we tell them is, don't have them for the first few months. Get your peace established first. Let your brain heal. Because of course, peace comes from the healing of the brain, right? It's the regeneration of dopamine receptors. It's uh, inflammation and insulin uh, and triglycerides coming down enough to have leptin on board. Those are the things that cause peace. Get your peace first and then run the experiment later when you have a peaceful brain so you can see the difference. So you'll notice if it kicks up some more food chatter or thoughts or cravings, you'll notice it. Get your peace first, get it well established. And then the second thing that we tell people that relates to peace is when they do run an experiment, like, okay, try a piece of Ezekiel toast for your uh, grain at breakfast, try that. And then ask yourself the four questions. And the first question is, do I have peace around it? Do I have peace around it? Or has it kicked up food chatter or obsession? And then the rest of the four questions are, um, is it healthy? Is it messing with my weight? And is it escalating? Escalating. That's why I had to give up decaf um, a few months ago was because it was escalating. It had escalated up to, you know, a dozen cups a day sometimes. So I don't know, maybe even more. So it was escalating. I typically think an experiment is working if I have peace around it and it's not escalating. As long as it's not messing with my weight and as long as it's reasonably healthy, I call it a win. But the main thing is that I have peace around it. My peace, mentally speaking, my peace is probably the most valuable asset that I have in my Bright Line Eating journey. It really, really matters to me. It's the free in the happy, thin and free. When we used to talk about happy, thin and free, it's the free, it's real freedom. So it's not just that we're in our bright body. It's not just that the weight problem is handled. It's that we have the weight problem handled and we have peace of mind around all things food related, food and weight and exercise related peace, total peace. Now, um, as I've illustrated here, you know, I'm 19 and a half years into this journey and I don't always have peace. I lose it sometimes. But the goal is to get it back and to do whatever it takes to get it back. So to get it back, I've had to let go of some things like decaf. I've had to examine my program to see is my food too sexy? Am I using too many condiments? Am I doing anything with my food that might kick up my peace? I've had to make extra phone calls, um, take extra meditation time and do some journaling and then really ultimately accept that the thoughts and the cravings will pass. They will pass as long as I don't eat, they will pass. And sometimes I just, it kicks up because I'm a food addict. I really am a food addict. Um, and for me, peace is the most prized possession. So just some thoughts today on peace. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.